snack. Regardless of whether or not he was on drugs or no, we've seen that man's knee on that man's neck. Now, one thing that I will say, I do totally think that it's bullshit that his family is trying to sue Kanye West for saying that because Tucker Carlson said it first. Um, uh, there's also a physician who said the same thing and it was known, which his roommates also confirmed, that George Floyd was an addict. He did have a problem. That may not have been the reason why he died, but at the same time, I personally feel as if this has caused another wave of black people against black people because there's no reason why you should be suing this man for saying something when Black Lives Matter made $80 million off your son's name and gave you nothing. So I had to like literally do my research because I really wanted to know, okay, so did they pay the family or how did they reap the benefits of this? They didn't, yeah. they didn't pay this family. The city of Minneapolis, they paid that family $27 million. And then the people who contributed to the GoFundMe, they gave them $13.7 million. Black Lives Matter made $80 million on that man's name, and they didn't give them anything. And, you know, so, and, and I tell, I tell you what I just found out. That's going to that blew the top off my, my lid. Kanye gave him two mil. Kanye West gave the Floyd family. See, one thing we got to understand is that they keep trying to play with history and they keep trying to load and load and load and load things. So things that kind of happen that slide under the rug, they try to make it seem like it don't happen or never existed or, you know what I'm saying? Yes, Kanye West gave the George Floyd family some bread. So that's what I'm saying, like, I, at at this point, you know what I'm saying, when you have the George, like the Floyd family and you know, no no disrespect, but I mean, you know, they they they've been inf infiltrated too, you know. I seen somebody in the comment, I say I hey, make sure y'all share this, man. Hit the like button, share this shit. This is straight heat right here tonight. I seen somebody say Kanye's an idiot in the story. Look. It's my cousin. Look, Kanye Kanye is someone who is let's let's just be 100 kanye is a entertainer he's not malcolm x he's not martin luther king this nigga don't read books okay so he hangs out with with candace owens and those that are like very extreme that's why he came with the george floyd shit there's some other things that you can tell that he's been hanging around some other people lightweight white supremacists you know what i'm saying um Say he died of asphyxiation, not an overdose. Yeah, I mean, you know, Kanye's a G. Ka look, Kanye, Kanye West. See, so, so I think with this interview, he was smart enough to do what he did because I think he knows at some point in time they are gonna try to get him out of there. He he's done something to where he's pissing them off, and he's like naming. He's like, and see, he's the only one so far. That has not been taken out. All any other person that's talked about the industry, talked about a certain group of people, and see, you know what's what's crazy is that these the certain group of people he's talking about, they allowed this type of music to be made that is talking about death and destruction. They're and not you know what? That's a good point right there because one thing that I, and I listened to uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins earlier, he went off. Like, Boyce Watkins went off. Like, I'm talking about, like, a whole 23 minutes. <laughs> he was going off. And it was something that stuck out to me. Um, and it was something that Kanye said that also stuck out to me. Because this ain't the first time that we done heard about the the the, the people um, and how they do our culture. Um, he said that name one black man who has one of them signed under him and you can't name none they own all of our shit when it comes to entertainment right. they own hollywood 
They have so much power in Hollywood that you can't even say their name in a song. And that stood out to me because if you listen to All About the Benjamins, right? All About the Benjamins, you hear nigga, ass, bitch, everything all in this song. But the moment that they say something about Hebrews, they completely take it out. You can't say anything about these people. And Lord Jamar said something today that really stuck out. That man said, you know who is in control when you find out whose name you can't talk about. So why is it that this group of people who have been here at a shorter amount of time than our ancestors have been here, they went through a bad time. We know that the Holocaust was a fucked up thing. How is it that they have so much influence and so much power over shit that our people make? When it comes to Revolt TV, the person who is in control of Revolt TV is also one of them. So, of course, it makes sense that they're going to pressure the black man, not the, not the Hispanic guy, because DJ Effin is Hispanic, Cuban, I think. They're going to take him and put him in the front street and say, hey, I apologize. This was completely out of context. But how is it what he said so offensive? But the fact that the day before you didn't, you had people on there talking about pimping. You had pimping can on there the day before. You you sit around all day getting drunk and getting high. Y'all talk shit on there all day long. But the moment that somebody get on there and they say something that's against these specific groups of people, now you want to apologize. So where's the freedom of speech at? Nah, when you when you so when you so we gotta be we gotta be uh, clear like when you in 2022 right now being a uh, black American foundational black American descendant of slave whatever you identify as like right now there's been a whole systematic thing of trying to really disrupt and get rid of the black gene period. So they've gotten rid of us to have any kind of freedom of speech, any kind of um, rights and, and any of these laws. There's, there's nothing that's constitutional that they have upheld when it comes to any of these other type of the Mike Browns and any of these things. They, they've, so when, this, when the Trayvon Martin popped off, that really uh, changed how they start really doing things with the black culture. You know what I mean? And they've been turning up ever since. And so what they'll do is they'll they'll also they'll also create this whole now now with the social media, they'll create this whole fantasy land to get us into this like rabbit hole and to be away from what's really happening out here. And I'm to, like would see it'd be different if it wasn't Kanye. And if it feels like someone else, but Kanye's affiliated with politics. Kanye is someone who uh, was trying to run for president. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they know, they know that it's, 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 they have to throw somebody like him out there to keep us mm -hmm. away from, you know, what's going to come up here in November, which is these, these, you know, these, this voting shit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. And so like with Kanye, you know, you know, they, you know, they only going after a certain part of his video or the whole interview. The stuff he even said that they're saying is anti-Semitic. They're not really even going in so hard like that on him because if some of the things that I've heard him like say, you know, it was something that they couldn't really disagree with. That's why the whole interview is on right now. Revolt took that down. You know, Revolt took that down because he was on there talking about Diddy and Meek Mills being the feds. And you know what? I got to, like, send a big shout out to every influencer that copied that and reposted it. Yeah, because they've been, they been going live with it. Like they've been going live with it. They've been going, they've been going hard with it. And, you know, you do have some people, of course, that aren't too happy with what he said. You got people like Lil Boosie that's chiming in. 
Um, listen, Boosie, you might not see this. You might not. You might see it. Oh, they said shut they the said fuck uh, up. they said it's Boosie, shut up. I be want to say Boosie, shut up because like my thing is is this. I rock with little Boosie. Like he's funny as hell. When it comes to like serious topics, that something like that, you have nothing to say about that because you don't add any value to our our people at all. Like none at all. Like you're not doing anything to help the consciousness of our people one bit. And I think that we get to this point where people got to stop thinking that these entertainers are our saviors. They're not our saviors. They're not. These is, this is not the days of when Muhammad Ali and, and you know what I'm saying? Uh, Isaac Hayes and all these people were out here really doing something that was supposed to be remarkable to black people. They're not. Now, granted, I, I, I rock with Kanye. You know what I'm saying? I like his music. I do pay attention to some of the things he say, but I don't let it get it to get it to the point to where it takes me completely out of my zone that I got to get on Facebook and I got to say he's a dumbass. He's an asshole. He's a coon. A lot of people be saying certain people are a coon because they don't go according to what your ideology is and what, what the hell we need to do. So nowadays you got to ask yourself, okay, what am I doing in order to be a proper representation of what my community is? Are you out there growing trees or some shit? Like, do you got a garden? Right. Are you writing a book? Are you doing a podcast? Are you doing anything to educate our people? Are you starting schools or businesses in order to educate, to help the people get jobs? If not, you have nothing to say. Yeah. At this point, it just feels like a lot of people are just use are literally taking the focus off of their own lives and the things that they need to do in order to enrich and better themselves. And they're looking at these people who don't even know that we exist and making it seem as if what they eat is making you shit. And it really ain't. You could take what you could take from it and you could learn something from it. But really what he said, it ain't shit that we ain't already know. We knew that these folks been in power over, they own the money. So no, you can't say shit about them. They own the money. There's 13 families that we that we got that control everything that we got going on right now. 13 families that is at the top 1% of the pyramid of this world. Yeah. Yeah, hate like... About 85, 85% of people don't even know who the hell these families are. Nah. Well, they, they probably they probably do. They just don't they just don't see like so I I gave up on I gave up on trying to convince people a long time ago. Like either you either you know what's going on out here or you dog food, man. You fool. You're you are you you are the prey, not the predator. If you don't know what's going on, but see the thing is, like they throw so much at us. If you ain't in the now, you you, you think everything you're seeing is like real. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of stuff ain't a lot of stuff. Like I, like a lot of stuff, I don't even know what to believe with any of this shit anymore. <laughs> like this shit is just, this shit is just Man, so. This shit be, I can't so, keep up. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's wild out here. You know what I mean? It's wild and like you know, like I, I think Kanye, you know. He like all like everybody serves a purpose in all this, you know. What I mean, it's, he's someone who, you know, his purpose may be to generate the conversation, like what we're doing right now, because he did, mm -hmm. and he was smart. He was very smart by video recording that with his own team, because mm -hmm. that could have been on revolt, been up for that period of time. And they and they and they could have he could they could have took it down and we would be speculating and all these other things if you didn't see it blah 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 hoping somebody recorded it, but because he had his own shit, he was able to put it out there even after they took it down. Oh, uh, yeah, people, people need, need to, to open their inner eye to know what happens around them, but some don't even care. No, because a lot of people like I've seen people who have not even seen the interview and our passing judgment on little video clips that they see 
based upon this interview. What was yeah. you about to say, bro? You 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 one thousand percent right, and, and I want to say it's not that people don't care. This this is what I've been saying for a very long time. People would rather be in love with the lie than to live and love the truth. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We 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 love this shit. We love we. It ain't we don't care. We just love. We just love the lies, man. We love the lies are so intriguing. We rather believe that that is the truth. Like that's where we at. Well, the this. truth is. The truth is boring. The, yeah, the truth. You don't want to hear the it's truth. Boring. You don't want to hear the you want to, you don't want to hear no goddamn. You don't want to hear no the truth. The truth. What's the, what's that? Like, what's that? And let you and if you speak it, man, listen. If you if you even speak something that's gonna get people to talking, it's it's like it's a scary thing. Like I was watching. I don't know if you ever watched. Um, you probably know who this brother is. Rest in peace to um, uh, the minister uh, Khalid Muhammad. Um, I watched one of his, they comfortable with the lie. Exactly. Sis. They so comfortable with it. I watched, um, if you all get a chance, go to YouTube, check out Kali uh, Muhammad. He's no longer with us right now, but this brother was extremely, yeah, extremely he, powerful. He was one of the realest. Um, he was one of the realest. A lot of people say that he was murdered. Um, he was with the nation of uh, the nation of Islam and he did a lecture at King University called the secret relationship between black and Jews. And that that lecture itself, they say, is really what got him kicked out of the um, nation because they didn't want him to speak on that. So with that being said, like, what is the secret relationship between us? Like, what is it about us, about our culture, that they look at and figure that they own that they want to be owners of like what do you think that is so i think i because you know that's a good question you know because um uh you know i some some things i have been um feeling and thinking for a long time but like now i've kind of just been a lot more open-minded um i think i think the, the problem is that they know they know they know that us over here are the original beings period you know i i i'm really i'm really at, i'm really at a point now where i believe that a lot of us that have been all over here we've been over here for a long time we we really don't have a connection to africa so much like that and i've seen some things where it suggests that uh, things that are over in Africa can only be over there that belong over here and vice versa, mm-hmm. you know? And so I believe that they know that we are, you know, the Henrietta Laxes, you know what I'm saying? We, we have the genetic makeup to live forever. And so we are the original beings. We are the original scientists, all these things that they doing, they base, they've taken from us. You know what I mean? We we don't only we we not trying to figure out how to get it back. These things that it, whether it be financially, it doesn't matter if you want to go through all stages economically. All uh, I mean, you know, uh, ha- you know, habitat, anything you can name. Like you know, they know that we the ones that started all this shit. They know that, you know. So they use the things that we have, blacks, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call us. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to, I mean, you know, I don't know if, if, if you know, in Mika, I don't know if they're African, I don't know. But melanated yes. beings. If you want to say, you know, color. if you, I mean, I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm, I'm not narrow, narrowing it down to a certain area, but I'm just saying they know that we are the original people. We had all this science, we had all these things, we were, we were already doing it. We already had information. We were already doing like brain surgeries and everything. You know what I'm saying? While they while they were in caves. You know what I'm saying? So So do you think that there's ever a way for us to get that back? Yeah. So 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 this yeah, so what's what's happening right now? I believe it's a lot of us that are like in our in our age bracket generationally that have been awoke, awakened, and ready to mobilize, you know what I'm saying, in some form of fashion. 
what what did us harm and and this may what did us harm is the civil rights era generation you mm. know they did more harm than good they did not they we could have been had a reparations we could have been had hate crime bill we could have been have all these resources that we could be using right like by this point we should be on on, on many playing levels but when you had a group of people that just wanted to really assimilate and be a part of, you know, why why, why would I want to go fight for my human rights when I really just want to be able to, uh, you know, be on the golf course with you, John, uh, Billy, you know, I, I want I want the same access you got. Me, you know, so I don't even change my voice, man. You know what I'm saying? Like we right. that generation, it's a lot. It's a lot that became millionaires. They became into money and they didn't pass that down to us in the way that we should be. Like if anybody that like luckily I have on my mama's side, luckily I have a real strong genetic like lineage. So, you know, there's land that's in Tennessee that my my people like if your if your your people should be have gotten to the point where they own some land. If your people didn't own no land, they they fucked it up somewhere. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, even even and I ain't trying, you know, throw my my people under the bus, but like on my father's side, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it, it was it, it was a, all almost all black families got a house that was a designated house that everybody mm -hmm. met for the family. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, you know, my particular situation, somehow that house got burned down. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the same thing that it's the same thing that happened. And it's so crazy. You said that. I don't know if you have ever it's the show that I was watching a couple of days ago. And this was before this whole situation with drink, drink champs even came up. And it's called The Hunters. And it has Al Pacino in it. I've seen I don't know that. if y'all seen that. I've seen it's it. It's on Amazon. Really good, really, really good show. But it's some jewels that's been dropped up in there. I I've wasn't seen. aware about Operation Paperclip until I watched that show. Now, for those of you all who don't know what Operation Paperclip is, it's basically when uh, I want to say like this was like in the 1940s, maybe 1950s, after the um the holocaust the united states government allowed nazis to come over here and they were be they started becoming a part of the government making certain types of things happen um there was a part in there where they actually were bringing over something that they were going to have like big names put in their food. Come to find out this specific item that they were going to use, they were going to only push it out to the inner city. It was going to kill people, but it was only going to do it slowly to the point to where they weren't going to be able to even stop it once it began. And guess what it was? It was high fructose corn syrup. So they were going to take the sugar out of products and replace it with high fructose corn syrup. And what that was going to do is that was going to kill off black and Latino and people of color in the inner cities. They weren't going to know any difference because nine times out of 10, they were probably going to be eating junk food, eating drinking pop and eating Kool-Aid and shit. So then I got to thinking to myself, Look how many ailments that we have these days. How much sickness is that we have plaguing our community right now? Obesity, diabetes, heart disease. Uh, so many people I know from my age group who died at younger ages, like in their like late 20s, maybe early 30s of heart disease and all these sicknesses. So... Do you think that maybe that is something that could literally be happening right now where we do have this these groups of people in the government that are in control that have that access to be able to slowly but surely kill us? 
Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, and just just right quick, the, um, they said uh, they didn't want us to them this. Look, they they know they know so they know that they they can. Right now, they slowly waking up a sleeping giant. You know, mm -hmm. we we I believe that we are are definitely being on cold more. We're doing things right now. Things have been done more within the past and within the past 10 years that's ever been done in the past like 40 or 50 years when they're using the same kind of language politically that these influencers are having from the social media when it comes to pol politics and black people when they're using the same kind of terms and language man we're making a whole impact has been made um mm -hmm. And to, and to, and yeah, things there, yeah, they change. A uh, uh, change gonna come, you know what I'm saying? Man, listen. You know what I mean? And, uh, uh, but just to, uh, go back off of, um, uh, what, what you were saying, um, so, so I, I think that, uh, I think when, when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, just how they, how they have us out here right now, uh, they 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 have there's so much his, historical things that's happened that at this point in time if you're someone who's not trying to feed yourself with some kind of for real history and know what's going on out here is you're you're like i said you're a sitting duck man you're a sitting duck you know when things like this happen with kanye and they glorify and they all of a sudden switch it to be something he said within the first like you know, 30 minutes of the show, blah, blah, blah. And then Nor Nori Yeager come. See, I, at this point, I don't I don't think Kanye is so much of the problem. It was it was it was Nori Yeager nigga explaining, man. Yeah. Like that was yeah, bad, I man. like the, the, the Kanye thing, it was so long. The interview was so long. You we we could be talking about this shit for the next two, three years. Like, yeah, I kind of feel like he should have challenged him. If if you knew for sure that this was something that you because 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 at the end of the day, you wanted to do the views. You wanted the views because you said it at the beginning of the interview that last time that you had him on there, y'all had literally skyrocketed in views. So you already knew what was going on with this whole situation with him wearing that White Lives Matter shirt. You know how people felt about that. Yeah. And y'all put him on y'all platform anyway. So my yeah. thing is, is that like, if you already knew what this man was on, why would you even put him on there only for you to double back? Not one time did any one of you niggas say anything to be like, nah, bro, don't, that, that ain't right. That ain't cool. Sway check Kanye. Okay? Sway check him. Right. And the thing about it is that, like, if you knew that this man have all of these things and you knew that he was, you know, he was going to be talking crazy. Y'all gave this man three hours to talk. He talked <laughs> probably about 90 percent of the time. Yeah. Y'all didn't say nothing. He didn't say, yeah. he didn't say anything. He, didn't say. He, did, he hopped from subject to subject. <laughs> yes. In a matter. Yes. In a matter. Yo, in a matter of like 15 minutes. This nigga went from like three different subjects. Yes. And that and that's what I'm saying. Like they and, and see on, on that uh on that Breakfast Club interview with Noriega, man, like he 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 was saying he was saying that and then he was saying that uh it was uh it's called drink champs, not think champs or some shit and the whole purpose right. of the show is not to be like to be like real uh thinking and all that other. See, this is the thing, like like think man, Noriega is somebody who like he 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 plays stupid and he may kind of seem stupid when when they there because he he does act like he don't know what the fuck be going on half the time. But he is not a dumb dude, man. He's not a dumb dude at, at all. all. You know what I mean? So he knew, man, when he came in there and, and when he came in there with the, when Kanye had his own cameras. Noriega knew it was gonna be some shit. He knew it was gonna be some shit, man. Ain't nobody ever brought their own cameras up in there like that. You know what I'm saying? So he knew Ye was gonna come in there and probably do something to probably get that whole shit shut down. But if you can't handle the heat, 
don't put Kanye on your platform because history, let the record show, okay? There hasn't really been a lot of interviews where he wasn't wilding. Like, yeah. there really hasn't been that many. Well, you, you know, know what I'm saying? And also, also, so the thing is with the, the, the yay right now, what he did at Drink Champs, I think, was a was a, a culmination of him starting to get blackballed more. They 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 came they came and told him to get his money out the bank. Uh, he he even white before the White Lives Matter shirt, you know, what I'm saying he he was already like, you know, going through the Pete Davidson Kardashian witchcraft shit. So like they was they was he he was slow. They were slowly. For the past like six, seven years, man, he I mean, you don't know if he's been MK Ultra, you know what I'm saying? Like he on medicine, you know, you just don't know, man. And so at this point, it's like, it's like what the fuck? He on go, man. I, you know what I'm saying? Like he go. came out, he knew, be, he knew. You know, because I heard, I like, so I heard like, my bad, my bad. I mean to cut you off, but one one thing before I forget, I heard that um he was supposed to be doing a, um one of the uh, LeBron James interviews. They took it down. And they took it down. They took it down. So he was probably on and there you, talking that shit on there even heavier. Like, it was him, Jeezy in there, and then he was probably in there. Man, like, but the thing about it is that's what I'm saying. It's like... And the nigga only like 5'4". The nigga only like 5'5". Five, five. Kanye West is like 5'5". Five, five. But the thing about it is this. The nigga's short, nigga. I remember back in the day, there used to be a show called the rock what was it the robert downey jr show they used to talk cash shit donahue yeah cash shit on these shows they never ever man they used to fight on these shows first of all robert downey jr used to smoke on his show he used to cuss all kinds of shit that's what i'm saying like it seems like we are being marginalized little by little Okay, so the fuck what if he said something that you didn't agree with? You should already know what this man is going to do. You're talking about a man who walked in front of the whole world while Taylor, Taylor Swift was getting her damn award and snatched the microphone out of her hand. You're talking about a man who spent his entire concert ranting about things that he was dealing with. People put Kanye West on their platform because they know that people are going to watch. It's like watching a, a, a it's like watching a car crash. You know what's going to happen. So for you to go back on there, let him do what he do, whether he was gonna walk out or not. Okay, fuck it. If you knew that it was gonna cause some problems, you should have let him go. You should have let him walk out. But for you to sit there with alcohol all around, y'all, we all know what happens when you're drinking. What you got on your mind for you to double back after at a point in time, black men, we just gotta y'all gotta stop apologizing for shit. Y'all always apologize like people. These black men are always forced to apologize for shit that they say. If that's how you feel, say it with your chest. Isn't it, isn't it, that's because they scared. They scared. They scared. They so a lot of these people, man, even like a Noriega in that position, like he he's super scared because see, like he's someone who coulda coulda sold his soul to to be bigger than what he was, and because he did he did it he did a own he did an interview talking about this. He said that it was like three three doors he could have chose or three paths he could have chose. He could have chose the right, the left, and down the middle, and he chose down the middle, which was basically him having to do things on his own. So when he got this drink champs thing and it blew all the way up to this point right now, you know, now he's back and now they, you know, they could possibly offer him some other things. So it's like he 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 had to be the fall guy. But I wasn't expecting it, though. I wasn't expecting him to be apologizing for another motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you man, that, <laughs> and I think that's what that was the shock of it all, because it's like. We didn't really know DJ Effin like that, so he wasn't going to say shit. Because at first, I ain't going to lie, up until I looked him up, I was like, damn, is the dude over there Jew? Uh, is he Jewish? <laughs> like, I didn't know who he was. 
Right. But like, I just kind of feel like he got the wake up nigga call that the the great Paul Mooney used to talk about. And yeah. uh because he's close. He... See, like Kanye's close, man. And I don't mean to cut your thought. Kanye's close because the thing is, the thing is, with all these other artists and all these other people, period. When they when they go when they go against the black culture, and we can go down the line, you know what I'm saying? From the Bill Cosby's to all these people who have said something negative a, a, a about their culture or have done something against. I mean, shit. Look at um ASAP Rocky. You know, he made some comments about Mike Brown and then he he had his ass stranded over there in what Switzerland or something. And he was hoping that we that black culture would come and try to save that shit. No. So no. like what Kanye Nobody save him. Yeah, so with Kanye, man, it's a fine line he's riding because if he don't if he don't come out and, and just be really just embracing black people more, if he ain't doing that and trying to ride that line where he wants to think he's white or think he's in the same table with these people, man, the black culture is going to get him out the paint. We already that close already. We like right now he shits and giggles. If he, yeah. if he continues to do kind of what he, but see, he did so much with his interview. It's like, they're only taking the certain part, but it's like, man, if he does something else, man, if this nigga keeps going, man, after a while, black people going to be like, yo, we out. Nigga. We, we done. Well, Good. You know what? Um, true be told, a lot of black folks kind of was feeling what Kanye was saying in this interview, though. Because he, like, he was dropping, like he, he was, was dropping, he was some, dropping real... some, he was dropping some real shit. Um, now, now, you know, people like us, everyday people, you know, a lot of people who ain't really already kind of was done with Kanye. Of course, no, they're not feeling the shit. But a lot of people are feeling what he's saying, especially like a lot of people in, in, in the industry, because they know they feel that squeeze. You know what I'm saying? To be in this industry, you got to know that there is a power that's bigger than you. That's bigger than this color that we have right here. Right. They're, they're, I mean, look at what we got going on right now. We got the women of hip hop fighting with each other on Twitter in front of the whole world. About who's winning, who ain't winning, whose song is the best. We can't even have a combination of, of female artists right now who can get along with each other long enough to even make a song with each other in order to bring some type of unity. You got so many people that's coming down on that situation. And then on top of that, it's like maybe they're creating these issues within our community for a reason there's got to be a reason behind it because not 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 before this well, like a week or so ago we got all these black couples that's getting divorces and breaking up and shit you know what i'm saying not even before that you have something else going on it's like they create these issues and these distractions and then they make us turn against each other and we do it in public. We do it in public for the people who really don't like our asses. And they sit back and they just watch and be like, job well done. Yeah, see, I think, I think, well done. I, think I, I, and, and I totally agree. You know what I mean? I think within the past like five, six years, a lot of things have really been happening in people's faces to where, you know, like, I mean, People would like to use the term conspiracy, but if you can see something in front of your face and you see the fixes in, I mean, this politic thing is, is a prime example. So a lot, I think a lot of us are really at the point where we are on some kind of code. We are detaching. It's just that. So one, one thing that I did not I don't want to be is of the um, older generation man that believes everything yeah. that they see on tv man they believe everything they see on tv they My all that. Cares. And what I Duffy think... say? let's see where you right quick the media puts out the pieces to make him look bad where was the part where he said he think we're one people and he speaks so much about love yeah and because yeah there's a terrible a... predictable Good, yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, and there's a part of because there's a part on there where he speaks about us being the original, you know, Jews and everything, which is true. That's all. There's things that he said on there that they can't refute. They can't 
you know, if you see any of these things that they're going to talk about, they're not going to give anything specific that he said about that group of people that made them angry, mad or, or whatever. There, there's nothing that he's because a lot of from what I've gathered, a lot of what he said in this interview was actually trying to, uh, you know, act like he wanted to be a part or just give praise. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Kanye isn't thinking about anybody black made. He's selfish. He's a selfish child and says slavery was a choice. So whatever they do to him, do it. I feel you sound very I feel where you're coming I, from, but I, that's a very small minded thing to say. Because I, at the same time, at the same time, when he said that slavery was a choice, right? He did end up breaking down what he meant by that. And it made sense to me when I heard it again. Because if you think about it, look at where we are right now. Right now we're slaves to the media. We're slaves to this social media shit. We're slaves in some way to something because a lot of us ain't really creating wealth for our families. We're not out here building no businesses in our in our own neighborhood. We're allowing people from other countries to come over here and take over our own neighborhoods. I don't know nobody in this world right now, in this neighborhood right now, that owns a grocery store, that owns a hospital, that owns a school. I don't know nobody out here that is a law that owns a that has their own lawyer business. That is a business lawyer, because that's one thing that the Jews got right. See, what the Jews got right is they got law on their side. Once they got the law on the side and they learned that legal need, that legal lead shit, and they started getting that money investment, because when the Rothschilds created the first investment banking system, America couldn't do nothing but fall in line. The rest of the world couldn't do nothing but fall in line because that was the first time that they met somebody that was able to organize and learn how to put something together when it comes to finances. The problem is, is that we pick apart these people and what they say, but we don't look at what we do in a mirror and think to ourselves, okay, what am I doing? What, am, what, what, am I not a slave to something? Yeah. Yeah. I, that, that part, right. So yeah. And you're right. Uh, so when I heard that initially, um, of course, they take these little sound bites and everything, but I do understand what Kanye is saying when he said that slavery thing, because, you know, it is a choice. It's a choice right now. You know, the only thing, the only difference is you ain't you ain't on no plantation physically, but some right. some of you niggas is on plantations mentally. Man, we, you know we, what I'm saying? we so messed we, up in the mind right now, because I'm so, talking about like. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. So he 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 knew he knew, what, he knew what he knew what he was saying to a degree. But I believe he's been around some some people that know, you know, that some of the real, real shit, you know. So it, the way it came out for him, I understand what he was because, see, they want to paint this picture as if every black person was a slave over here in this country. And, and, and when when slavery happened, that is not that is not facts. That is not it really ain't there because was, a lot we, of people over here had their own business. We were all their own land. We already, and they were indentured servants. They were indentured servants, and they were supposed to get their land back. The, the deal, there was a deal that was made that where these people were supposed to get their land back after they helped foreigners come over here, after they helped them to establish, they were supposed to get their land back, but they never got their land back. Let me see this. This ain't scheduled for us. Where are you going to get the money from? If you look at how the black dollar is spent in our neighborhood right now, and you look at how the dollars are spent in other cultural neighborhoods like Indians or Asians, their money circulates within their own neighborhood. Our money circulates out of the neighborhood. It literally goes around the block like one damn time. So the same people that sit here and say, oh, well, I don't fuck with Kanye, fuck Kanye, da 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 I don't do this, or I don't fuck with that person, I don't fuck with that person. But yet, how many black designers are you supporting right now? How many black platforms are you supporting right now? How many black businesses are you supporting right now? Are you are you coming together with your family and putting money in a pot to start a laundromat in your neighborhood? Are you cleaning up your neighborhood? 
Because at the, at the same time, we could sit here and point fingers all day at who not doing what. But what you doing? Hey, it's facts. That's super facts. Super facts. Super goddamn facts. Um, I'm looking at some of the other comments. So, um, yeah. One one thing I'll say is uh, remember Black Wall Street. And so 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 one thing I saw on there on the Drink Champs interview. See, Kanye didn't even know how much it was or is to own a gas station or a bank. Does anybody on this on this platform right now, does anybody know how much it is to own a gas station? It's eighty thousand dollars. Now that may sound mm. like a lot, but really, really, it's not really a lot. It's not really shit. Y'all could have took them PPP loans to get it to, to, to open a bank. It's a, it's like a hundred thousand to open a bank and see what a bank I get shit. <laughs> and, 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 and with a bank, the most important thing about banks is deposits. The more yeah. deposits you have in there, the better credit line that they can create. So it's like, man, I don't even know if if so. A lot of these things that that, and I'm not saying to to about any of this, nobody in here. But at, with me at this point, when people be having opinions, like I have to really see if niggas is really qualified to even speak on some of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. it's it's like, man, I don't really don't know if they yeah. are. I don't know how they was. I gotta I gotta try to ask niggas how they was raised. Like who raised you? How what, did you have, how was your household? What, did you did, was you a Christian? Do you believe in like do, because there's some niggas out here that still believe in Santa Claus. <laughs> and I feel like listen, everybody's entitled to have their own opinion. I I understand that, but like let's not slam down. Let's not slam nobody else based upon what they with with how they say things if we ain't really putting in no work to try to right. make it seem like it's not the truth. You know what and, I'm saying? And, and that's what I'm saying. It. And we do we do need to support each other. And that's what I'm saying. So like more more the way we, we this is how how I how I envision us getting more freer with this is being able to be more on a grassroots level. Niggas niggas is gonna have to put their money up. Niggas gonna have to put their money together and, and we gonna have to really try to, you know, put put things in place to try to go and lobby, you know, and get into these politics. We we have been so politically uh like misinformed that we don't really understand how politics works, you know. Like I can tell yeah. you, right, I can say right now, we don't need to vote nothing because they. And then you tell some, you tell the average black person that some of these niggas is still caught up on they they parents' generation. No, oh, nigga, I'm gonna go vote. What you gonna vote for? I don't know, nigga, but we gonna go vote. So no, I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm not good. No, if you want to make a powerful statement as a people, hold your vote. Don't go vote. You see, so that's what I'm saying. These influencers that are on social media now. They've been talking about holding the vote. And because that has happened, you have seen some strategy from the Democratic Party because these people watch social media. Man, they so, going hard. And, and if you see, and, and, so hard. Saying, and I have to be questioning people because it's like I don't know. So when I see when I see some of these influencers put one of these videos that I seen of Trina and, and some and some yes. zesty nigga. Oh, talking about man. talking about no no vote no fucking, you understand what I'm saying? They are talking. I gotta about, laugh because that shit was. It's hilarious. It's crazy. <laughs> but but I, I'm like, man, and I'm like, man. So and we should be at the point where we like, yo, this shit getting disrespectful now. They not not only not only did that this they dropped that this year. What did they drop a couple years ago? Uh, uh, take uh, what was it? Um, they um. Uh, they did the whole, uh, well, they did the vax. They did the vax that thing up. That was the fucking travesty, nigga. <laughs> and that was a goddamn travesty, you understand? <laughs> and then, and then they, then they uh, the, the year before that or something, they, they did the uh, take your booty to the pole with some strippers. <laughs> Come on. Ah, they didn't do the P-Valley. They did the P-Valley like the, like, like the uh, mama did. But don't forget what Biden said. If you don't vote, you ain't you ain't vote for me. You ain't black. It, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> they man, they they disrespecting us so bad. But we but if we ain't politically inclined, like you know what I'm saying? If if we ain't politically inclined, if we don't really know what's going on out here, how can we say 
what's wrong or what's what how if we ain't got no plan if we don't understand what, sh what we should be trying to go after like how are we gonna really you know people just talking man people just talking talking emotional they getting they talk emotions and no and this is why conversations like this are, are i like conversations like this so let's see what the what they say here emika says that's not actually what he meant if you go deeper you will understand that he actually meant we need to fight for our we need to fight for ourselves nobody is a slave and, right. I, and I, when I read that, when I read that, I understand what they're saying. But see, that's the other thing with Kanye. When he speaks, there's so many interpretations of what he says. Yeah, it could be that yeah. can determine. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you think it's one thing, it's nothing. You know what I mean? So it's like it's it's just kind of you know what I mean. Let me see. He said we need to support each other. He just spent fifty on a new house. She, he's a billionaire. He also has a community in Wyoming where he has a whole bunch of people that lives on his land. Right, but 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 it's like, he's, but it's like we. But that's what I'm saying. It goes back to like what we're saying, though. Is that really his money that they are they allowing him to have that money? Because why is he? Why doesn't he have a gas station? Why doesn't he have a bank? Right. Why doesn't he that's have a true. clinic? He doesn't even have a clinic. It all starts at home. You know, yeah, you should be having all night. Time, like, you know? Time to better educate ourselves on a lot of stuff we think we might know. Yeah. That's fact. This is true. This is true. It's not coincidence that the main things they shine light on is the negativity within our culture. Absolutely. I saw something the other day that really struck a chord with me. And it said that the algorithm is spirit cooking our asses right now. Yeah, yeah. The al the algorithm is spirit cooking our minds right now. If you think, like I had to, like if you look on your timeline right now, I don't know if you've done this, but I had to do some cleaning on my timeline because it was so much trash being promoted to me, y'all. And I was just like, okay, like it's, I feel attacked. I feel acoustic. Like I feel battered right now because they kept sending me shit about um, getting plastic surgery and BBLs. Like I like my ass the way it is. That's that's BBL. the BBL. That's that's all the, of the all of the makeup ads now have men in them. <sighs> All of them, all of the makeup ads, and this is in by no means. Let me say this now, disclaimer: this is by no means an attack on the, L, the LGBTQ community. I'm just pointing out the obvious. All of the makeup ads that were normally for women now have black men. That's by design, though. Ain't no, they're not doing that with white models. They're not doing it. Look, they're not. They're not, and it's to the it's to the point, yo. It's to the point where everything you saying, when I'm on my timeline, I be I got to the point where I'm looking because I think I might have mentioned this um on the, on the last um show we kind of did. It's to the point now where I'm looking on my social media. I'm thinking to myself, hey, am I am I it, it, is everyone else's timeline scrolling looking like mine, or is mine specifically set for? Some algorithm shit that I didn't hit the like button on on something, and now they just flood me with the same. Like when I'm on someone else's page, am I am I seeing like some of the same kind of things? You know what I'm saying? Or am I seeing some different shit? And that's where I'm like, man, this whole algorithm is crazy, man, because that shit can be specifically just for you. So when you're on everything, it's just for you. You you ain't seeing the same shit I'm seeing. Nigga, I'm seeing uh big booties and all type of shit. I'm I'm seeing chicken. Like like nigga, it's, it's like you know <laughs> I'm I'm seeing seeing the new vegan <laughs> chicken, some some oyster mushrooms and shit sauteed. I'm like, damn, this shit look good in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Like they know, man, they know this shit is this they know, man. They they lock in with us, you know what I mean? So they feed off of that shit. You, see, you speaking about opening banks, get his other rich friends together. I mean you never know what you can do by picking up a book. You never know yeah. what we could do. Well, that, but that's what I'm saying. At this point, you know what I'm saying? It's like we can't really even like really think that these higher up entertainers or whatever who make a lot of money, who are really locked in with a specific, uh, they're locked in with something that they, they can get that money taken away at any time. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if you are on a grassroots level, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're going, you're in it from the mud. 
You know what I'm saying? So these are the ways that we're going to get out of that. You know what I mean? Like thinking that Oprah going to come save us or uh, Drake going to drop a couple million on, on some shit. Like, that's not going to happen, man. It's not gonna yeah, happen. he only did that in that video. That That's not going to happen for Yeah, real. and a lot of times. I of like time, this they, comment right here. This is a good one. He said, I said the same, fam. Just look at the athletes go straight to work when they retire. They, why the, why ain't they enjoying that money? Because they don't know what to do with it. It's not theirs. It's not theirs. And they and they are financially irresponsible. They came out with a um like a 30 for 30 on ESPN. Look that shit up. It was a 30 for 30 where it had um a host, um, I think it was a one or two part series where it talks about athletes. And their money, because see, a lot of people don't understand when these NFL players play each city they go to, they get taxed in those cities. So when they go mm -hmm. play, they may make, you know, a lot of money, but they're getting like taxed so heavy, you know, and they're not being responsible with their money. They're not they're not they're they're, they're not understanding anything about how to be financially responsible. You know, so they trick that and be broke by the time they've been out the league for not even five years. Hmm. Damn. But that be that, happening to them rappers too. Like for real. If you if you it like like if you notice like a lot of people be like, man, I don't understand how these rappers be getting broke. It's because they ain't making money like you think they be making money, man. Like no, they don't. They really don't get paid until like the fourth album. Like or doing just that money. That money be show money. You show know money. What I'm that, that's like, what they get their money that, doing show. That first. That first, I like we could look like like listen, we could look at Glorilla right now and be like, man, she looking real good. She got her. Tell you something, if that album don't don't do no sales, Glorilla gonna be looking like fuck nigga free Glorilla, and by next year, I even looked at the Tasha K thing because you know with Cardi B suing her for four million dollars for defamation of character. Right. Natasha K said that Cardi B need that money right now because she ain't making no money. Yeah, she probably do. She probably she ain't, do. Make, she ain't making no money. She only dropped one album. Right. Ain't nobody buying that whipped cream. Well, they, somebody, uh, Duffy Daniel said she showed her publishing or master. See, that's the thing. Like a lot of them, you know, what's crazy is that these things that happened in 2022 to these artists, why is it happening and now and it's been happening for 2010, 20, 2000? Like, well, it's been happening for a long time. Why is that? Yeah. Because a lot of these artists are not mentally like, man, I know if this, this was me at any given time. I'm getting me a, a entertainment lawyer off top before I signed. Yeah, anything. you're supposed to. But these people are so they so desperate and see. I, so I think a lot of these people, a lot of these artists, they 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 really don't they really don't mind if they got to clap their cheeks to be uh, at, a, at, a, at a different position. I think at this point, yeah. you get the hardest uh, rapper, you know, and they will clap them cheeks. You know what I'm saying? Um, I remember this. Look, I remember, I remember, I remember this one. So I, you know, I mean, I got a friend of mine who went to a, uh, he went to, uh, what was it? It was like a, a showcase or something, and it was a bunch of artists on there. And uh, he told me that when they had like a showcase period, because I guess they had like seminars and all this other stuff. But when it came time mm -hmm. for them to be able to come out and showcase they, their music. Same three or four niggas dressed the same. They all had tight ass pants. They all had <laughs> slim ass shirts. So the mind frame is that boondocks. They, 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 this is where they think that they have to look like this to make it. To make it. Man, that's crazy. Well, look, man, we're going to go ahead. We went over this thing. This conversation has been so bomb. Thank you so much. Hey, and I screen recorded. On. I screen recorded this, too, because I think a couple times this might have stopped on the feed. Because okay. right, right now, it don't even, when I look at the, when I hit the live button, it's just three zeros. So, okay. Well, shit. Like, thank you. Thank you so much, y'all. Thank y'all so much. 
for joining in. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for my homeboy, Jay. Y'all make sure y'all check him out. We will be back next Tuesday. Um, new topic. Uh, so, yeah, I appreciate y'all. It's my birthday this weekend as well. Happy so, um, I'll probably be going live at my little dinner. I don't usually do this, but look, it's 2022. If y'all want to cash up your girls, like a little bit. <laughs> 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 if y'all want to cash at me hey. at that earring queen, cash at. <laughs> if y'all don't, it's all good. I ain't no begging bitch. But uh, y'all have, <laughs> y'all have a good evening. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to Pretty Realist Podcast. I'll see y'all next Tuesday. Appreciate you, Jay. Thank you, boo. Yeah, for sure. All right, bye.